this uh, economic educational symposium. And uh, on behalf of the Yonkers African American Heritage Committee, along with a number of other businesses, we just want to welcome you and we are glad that you are present. Uh, my name is Brother Robert Winstead and I am uh, the president of the Yonkers African American Heritage Committee. And uh, this is a part of the uh, symposium, educational symposium that we've been uh, organizing for a number of years now. And this is a continuation of our educational uh, series. Uh, first of all, I just want to uh, let you know that today uh, we are very, very excited, tremendously excited here at the Riverfront uh, Library uh, to really be presenting one of the most dynamic uh, persons that we have had a chance to run into in the city of Yonkers, who is no other than our keynote speaker of the day, and that is Brother Tyrone Glover, who, along with his associates, uh, the young the young entrepreneurs and the young, uh, the Yonkers young entrepreneurs, and we'll be looking forward for them to be making the major presentation here at this, the second uh, Ujama uh, Educational Economic Symposium. So I just want to give a round of applause to them right off the bat. <laughs> because they are certainly doing the work, and that's what's required in order to rescue and reconstruct and to build businesses and to build relationships, uh, work is required. And so we're so grateful for each and every one of them and you will be hearing from them shortly. Okay, so we opened up and uh, the first thing we had was a, a film presentation there and I hope that some of you were looking at that. That was a film on financial literacy um, that was produced by um, uh, uh, Rick Mathis. And that was a film on uh, the condition and solutions uh, to financial literacy. We realized that there is a crisis, um, not only here in the city of Yonkers, but also around this nation and around the world. And so when I found that I was not adding to, but contributing to the problem, then I began to seek uh, information and knowledge about how best to uh, learn about my financial conditioning, and fundamental to that is learning about uh, what today's topic is going to address is your credit status. You know, knowing where you stand uh, as far as credit in this system uh, means the difference of hundreds to thousands of dollars that you will have to pay for items um, and have to, uh, to, 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 I don't want to say waste, but you will have to pay extra if you don't know and you do not, and you are not in tip top uh, credit shape. So we are looking forward to learning and to changing our mindsets uh, regarding our economic play. One other thing before I bring on um, one of our uh, members of the UN, and UN stands for Ujama Network. Uh, Ujama is a key Swahili term that means cooperative economics. It is the fourth principle or virtue of the Nguza Saba, the seven principles, and we are dedicated to learning more and to uh, implement more cooperative economic ventures. This uh, is our educational venture that we have undertaken and as a group we currently are looking at various areas of wealth development and this is one area credit. So Ujama again um, according to the fourth principle of the Nguzo Saba simply states to build and maintain our own businesses shops and stores and to profit from them together. Now we live in an uh, economic uh, society in which we know how to profit individually. We know about individual profit. Um, and so we are looking to expand how do we profit 
from your business, from my business, from our businesses together. And this might be a little one, this may be a little uh, simplistic for some, but certainly it's a fundamental thing for uh, the Yonkers and the African American community, as well as the um, uh, indigenous community uh, around the country. We've been changed. We've been, you know, during our history in this country, certain relationships have been broken. And so Ujama is an attempt to reconstruct those relationships back. So that's all I can say uh, that we want to present on that right now. Again, on the behalf of the Yonkers African American Heritage Committee, uh, we just want to hope that everybody uh, did receive their uh, program and inside the program that you can see there are a couple of events taking place. We want to bring your attention to that and we'll probably speak a little bit more to that uh, at the end of, uh, of the program when we have uh, closing remarks. But suffice to say that please look in, uh, look in your package. There is a uh, financial questionnaire. We'd like you to fill that out. There's also some information about our organizations and our um, member, uh, UN member uh, sponsors. So uh, with that, we want to bring on, um, we want to first thank you for being patient. We want to thank you for your listening attention. And <clears throat> it isn't but a matter of time before uh, people would realize that financial health is critical to your, emp your empowerment. And if you are seeking to, to uh, have impact in your community, if you are seeking to have an impact on the world, one of the first things you must address is your own financial condition. And so we know that uh, education and information is the cornerstone to starting, just starting the process of changing and for uh, economic empowerment. So this is one of the things that we are seeking to do. We have more on that a little later on. So right now, we want to bring on our next uh, brother before we, and then after which we'll uh, turn it over to our keynote speaker, uh, in the introduction of our keynote speaker. And this gentleman has been with us from the beginning. We have <clears throat> started this journey together. We have traveled around the country, in certain parts of the country, and sought the experts in, in the field of economics. And we have continued on the path of re-educating ourselves as well as our community about how we can empower ourselves economically. And so, um, he's a dynamic uh, young man, a uh, family man, um, who works uh, along with uh, throughway insurance brokers, and I believe he's come out of the industry or from Wall Street, but he'll tell you much more about himself and a little bit about the purpose of our Ujama Network, the UN, and uh, with that, please let us receive our friend and our brother, Brother Antonio and uh, Kenyatta with a round of applause. <laughs> Do you need this? I just need to see it. Okay. It's all good, Brother Winston. A round of applause for that great opening introduction. <laughs> Again, he mentioned my name is Antonio Kenyatta. I'm here representing Thruway Insurance Brokers. Uh, just to give you a backdrop of myself. I, come to, I came to New York from California. Uh, I've been spent the past 20 years working on Wall Street for probably the top three investment banks, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, as well as UBS. And so over that span of time, I learned a lot about money. And one of the things I say when I talk to families and sit down with them and talk to them about putting together a financial game plan is that most of us have gone to school for at least 12 years if we've not taken some more time and gone on to university and maybe graduate school. And through those years, whether it's been just a primary education or secondary, you, you were required to take math, you were required to take English, you were required to take history. And some of us took some other requirements. But what you were not required to take was classes on money. 
And as an adult, what you deal with every day is your money, is your credit, which Brother Glover will get into much more detail. And so the point is building and establishing yourself financially, making sure your financial house is in order, and, and, and how does that relate to Thruway? You know, I'm here to represent Thruway. You know, what I say when I meet with clients and, and talk with them is that I, I say, you know, I'm in the construction business. And, um, and they say, well, wait a minute, you're, not, you know, you're insurance. Well, I say, well, yeah, we build financial houses. So, and that all starts with insurance. And so the key thing that I want to give you, you know, in my few minutes here, I don't like to say a lot. I like to kind of keep it to some points that I think people can hold on to and remember. And so the main thing when you think about insurance, you think about protection. If something happens, it doesn't matter what the situation is, we all want to know that we're okay. You know, if we slip and fall, can I get the good help? If a tragedy happens economically, can someone help me get out of that situation? So insurance is just another form of protection. How do we protect what we have, whether it's a business we have, a car we own, um, or the loved ones in our house that we go home to every night? So that's the main thing about insurance is the protection. Again, we do all. We do the auto. We do commercial. We do personal, residential, um, so you name it. So I have a table back in the back. Feel free to stop by if you have any questions about the insurance. But the second point that I want to leave you, um, in addition to protection with insurance, is trust. At the end of the day, with insurance, you want to know in the back of your head that, okay, if I ever need this card, I can pull it out and use it. And that's what insurance does. Right. It gives you that protection but it's a protection you don't really want to use, but if you need it, you need to know that you can, deal, can rely on it. And the same again, again, I don't want to get into Brother Rob's presentation, is your credit. Taking your credit and making sure your credit where it needs to be, so when you need to make a purchase, or you need to get a loan, or any kind of financial development, you need to know that your credit is safe, and the people, when they look at you, they're going to know, can I, or can we, trust you, your business, what you're trying to do. Um, and so, you know, that trust, again, you know, I always have to say, you know, my, my first starts with the creator. Right. Um, second is really my family. And then broader, as we're doing here with everyone, is the community. You know, we're all a community working together. And the more we work together and the stronger we bond ourselves, the more powerful we become. And then the last piece that I want to leave you with what I always talk with my client about before I leave them is really creating wealth. And that's what this is really all about at the end of the day. You know, again, the protection is just in case so that your family is going to be okay. You know, having good credit allows you to do different things, you know, a, with, a, with an economic savings or an economic benefit. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really about creating wealth and really, for my clients, it's really about creating generational wealth. And I always start out with them on this, and I say, what's your grandfather's grandfather's name? And I wait. And most people say, I don't know. And now I say, okay, that makes sense. But I said, if your grandfather was Rockefeller, would you know who he is? If your grandfather was Carnegie, would you know who he is? And so what's the difference between those people and our grandfathers? They left generational wealth. That everybody in that family is benefiting from. So my point is, even in the idea of having protection, and having that trust, we can use insurance and insurance-related products and advisory products to create generational wealth. So what I want to leave you with is, who's going to know your name? Who's going to remember you? You know, is your name going to be like the Carnegie's or the Kennedy's? And so I don't want to take a lot more time. I'm really excited to hear Brother Glover 
go into this credit uh, analysis and how people can really take that to the next level. I'm excited to see what the, you know, the young uh, Yonkers entrepreneurs here and the, and the value they bring and, and the awesome work that Brother Glover is doing with them. I think, I think we want to just give them a round of applause for what they're doing too. I'm, I'm always inspired you know, with the youth. And, and so again, I thank everyone for the time. I thank everyone for coming. And if you have any questions about anything about insurance or generational wealth and how we help clients, feel free to stop by. Thank you. Let's give Brother Antonio Kenyatta another round of applause, please. And truly, um, that film that we were watching, same question that they ask. What legacy will you leave? You know, if you were to die today, that was the premise of that presentation. So really, without further ado, we are so excited. We are very excited for this next presentation, and we would like to call forth um, Josan and Osama so that they can do the introduction um, of our keynote speaker, and y'all can handle it the way y'all see fit. All right? Is that okay, everyone? All right, all right. So let's bring, um, let's bring those two gentlemen on right now, uh, Brother Jolson and Osama. You need anything? No, I'm fine. Okay, cool. All right, good afternoon. Um, my name is Jackson Barrigan. Yeah, Jackson Barrigan. And today I'm just going to introduce myself and talk about how I contribute to leverage credit recovery. So you guys already know my name, Jackson Barrigan. I'm 17 years old. I still go to high school at Gorin. I'm a senior. And the way I met um, Brother Tyrone was actually he was my Spanish teacher. He has some talent in that. And, um, you know, he just he saw potential in me in class. I always got in time. He always talked about me. Uh, he always talked to me about, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? How do you want to make money? So then he started introducing me to his business, Leverage Credit Recovery. And I kind of find it interesting because then I realized that I would need credit when I got older. And I saw that that was like one of the most important things in my life because without credit, I wouldn't be able to like buy a house, ask for loans, or apply for credit. And since then, I just, you know, stuck with him. Um, we've been through up and, up and downs. And from there, I just started learning a lot of things. And I actually helped my mom now. And that's basically what I have to say to my contribution to the business. So I'm going to pass it over to my other associate. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Osama Asaid, and um, I've been with Leverage Credit Recovery for about a year now. Last November was when I joined, and it has pretty much changed everything for me because before joining, I never really even thought about credit. I was 17 when I joined, now I'm 18, and I just realized that now I have to start dealing with credit, and to have someone like Mr. Glover basically mentoring me and teaching me how to start from scratch building my credit and fixing other people's credit, helping people is really just a blessing. And um, I want to thank Mr. Glover for that. And um, right now, I'm an executive vice president at Leverage Credit Recovery. And, um, <laughs> and that's, that's basically my contribution to the business, the company. and. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. And um, now I want to introduce Mr. Glover, and he's the keynote speaker for today's event. Um, he basically knows everything that there is to know about credit. He's the one that taught me everything that I know. He's taught everyone here everything that they've known. And today he's here to teach everyone else, you guys, what he knows. So. And good 
afternoon, everyone. How are we doing today? Great. Well, we were looking for a standing room only, but we are good with what we have. I'm very happy to have um, all of you who have d decided to take your Saturday and make it out here today. Thank you very much. Brother Rob, always so appreciative of what you do for the Yonkers community. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, Antonio, you know how we uh, we feel about it. We could talk all day long. So appreciate you being here. And we got a young man who's sitting up here up at front as well. This is Wade Smith. Wade is a financial contributor along with being a business partner of ours. So thank you so much, Wade, for uh, also taking from your Saturday and making it out here. So. I want to thank all of those young men over there. So if you're, not, if you're looking at me right now, I need you looking at them right now. Those young men, the, they're the reasons why I do what I do. I am a teacher, so I work with the Yonkers Public School. And uh, currently right now, wow, I'm in School 18, Dr. Wyatt, Scholastics Academy up on the hill. Uh, I started out in Gordon High School. So Leverage Credit Recovery has a platform. It started out in Gordon High School. The name Leverage came from so many different areas, but we all need a little bit of leverage. All of us. We can't get through life without. So those of you who don't quite thank your mom and dads in the manner in which you should be thanking your mom and dads, definitely go back and thank mom and dad, because without them, you wouldn't have leverage. You wouldn't have life. So it's very important to understand that we are all going to need a bit of leverage as we go through. So leverage credit recovery is my brainchild. Credit is something that we all have to have. There's no getting away from it. But as I was wanted before I get off track, those are young entrepreneurs. Yes. Young entrepreneurs. They're Yonkers young entrepreneurs. And we want to make sure that they understand that this is not about me. This is about them. Because when I'm dead and gone, when we're all dead and gone, guess who's got to carry that mantle? Guess who's got to carry and keep pushing forward that us of individuals of color have those necessities? And it's going to come through that, what we teach them today. So thank you, young entrepreneurs, starting with the young man right there, which is Alberto. Really quick, Alberto, just stand up. Stand up. Got to stand up. Just got to see you. Yes, that's Alberto Lopez. Alberto, just real quick, what grade are you in? Uh, I'm a freshman in college right now. Okay. Excellent. The young man next to him is Steven Gonzalez. Please stand up, Steven. <laughs> the young man next to him is Jose Ventura. Ben. And we've already met the young man next to him, Osama Al Said. <laughs> the young man next to him is Alexis. Now, your last name, I always pronounce it wrong. Huertas. <laughs> the young man next to him is. Well, I, uh, yes. Now, he. Now, he's a young entrepreneur before I even met young entrepreneurs. What do you do? Could you tell him really quick? The young man in the back greeting is Jimmy. We've already met Jackson Berrigan. And this young man right up front doing uh, my videoing is uh, Brian Rodriguez. Yeah. And we have and we have one more young man. This is Ever, and Ever just came to us, and we're very pleased. Again, thank you so much to these young individuals who take out of their time to come twice a week, sometimes when it's not really as favorable as we want the conditions to be, but they have showed their dedication. They have showed their commitment, not just to me, but to themselves. And I can't thank them enough for everything that I put you through, but as I tell them, this is a sport. I'm a coach, so my job is to not just, come on, you can do this now, uh-uh. 
I get deep down and dirty, and I tell them exactly the truth and the reality about what is to be expected when it comes to not only from me, but what's going to be even more expected of you when you get out there in the world. So again, to you young entrepreneurs, thank you totally from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate you all immensely. All right, so this is what we're here to come and talk about next week. We're here to talk about credit. Now, I don't know if Bob's going to work for us, but I'm hoping Bob does, because <laughs> Bob is about three minutes. If you go ahead and press that um, button, Bob is going to tell you a little bit of a, of a story about Bob. Just hit the button again. No? Bob doesn't want to work for me? Well, my apologies for Bob not doing what Bob should be doing, but <laughs> that's technology. Uh, go to the next screen for me. All right, so clearly that's me, Mr. Glover, Tyrone Glover. I'm the facilitator. I'm the one who put this all together. Leverage Credit Recovery came from my brain. It started off four years ago, five years ago in California when I was going through credit issues myself. And I'm just one of those notorious types of people that I just can't do something once. I got to learn everything about it. So I learned about credit, I learned about the social security mechanisms, I learned about the jobs, I learned about wages. Also, before I get into that, I have 28 years throughout corporate uh, America. I've been a corporate executive, I've worked for 19 different companies, and the one big issue that I found is that it's not the companies that are the problems, it's the people within the companies that are the problems. They're not training, they're not teaching, they're not educating, they're not doing what we should be doing when it comes to making sure that our individuals have what they're supposed to have. They're not giving any types of decent wages. I mean, wages have stayed stagnant for some time now, and individuals have to now go out and leverage some form of other understanding as to how do I get this home? How do I take care of this car? How do I maintain that household budget that I'm supposed to be maintaining if my wages are not set in the manner in which they should be? So the credit piece is just a combination of what we should be looking at and we should be monitoring it in the manner in which we most of us monitor everything else. We monitor our gas levels in our cars. We monitor our oil levels. We monitor so many things if you got high blood pressure, your glucose levels. You're monitoring everything, but the one thing that we're not monitoring is we're not monitoring our credit. So we're kind of looking at it like, ah, uh, it's not that important. But it's important when you get ready to go to that car dealership, and they keep you in there for five and six and seven hours. And then you walk out of there not with the vehicle that you wanted, but you walk out with something different. Then all of a sudden, you get home and you think to yourself, wow, I settled. You're looking at that interest rate, and where is that interest rate? Probably somewhere where you don't want it to be. But what can you do? You can't really do anything. You're stuck with that item. So our job here today is to basically give you some information, insights into what you can do beforehand. We are about being proactive and not reactive, because reactive doesn't do anything for anyone. Next screen. All right, so Leverage Credit Recovery strives to provide Credit recovery, uh, excuse me, credit recovery protection, summary judgment education, and document preparation in its most complete form. Our core focus is consumer education related to credit products and services with a new personalized consumer experience. We are about you, the consumer. We can go out there and we can do whatever we want to do for anybody, but if we're not taking care of you, you're not going to be that best resource that we're looking for. We want you to go to that next person and say, oh my goodness, look what happened over here. We want you to be that person who literally brings us the client. Because if we help you, you're going to go out and tell two friends who are going to tell two friends, and so on, and so on, and so on. So you are a consumer. We want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to present ourselves to you. So a, a, a round of applause for our consumers. <laughs> We work to eliminate the burden of financial and credit uncertainties while teaching business mindset for personal empowerment. Now that part there is our slogan, teaching business mindset for personal empowerment. Most of us consumers only know how to consume. We know nothing about business, but yet we're dealing with businesses on a regular basis. Every single day, when you get up in the morning, you turn on your lights. That's a business transaction. 
When you turn on that gas, that's a business transaction. When you turn on your television, that is a business transaction. We're all on our smart devices. That is a business transaction. Somebody's capitalizing. Somebody's making a lot of money off of our business transactions. But yet, we the consumer, we're wondering, where's mine? How come I don't get? But if you forget to make that payment, you know what happens with that business transaction? They will turn it off. They won't think about it one bit. So we as a consumer, we have to now get more educated, more a bit more wiser to how do those relationships work to our advantage. And trust me, the businesses can't succeed without us, the consumer. All right, so it's really important to understand you have leverage. You, we're now bringing it to a next stage of leverage. All right, so the consumer has been neglected and abused by lending institutions. Banks are taking advantage of you, and they have been taking advantage of you for about 30, 40 years. And we think that, wow, I can go to the bank and I can get a loan, or wow, I can go to my credit union and I can get a loan, but they're not doing that in your best interest. They're doing it first and foremost to make sure that their bottom line is taken care of. And when their bottom line is taken care of, you are just a consumer to them. You are just one little droplet in a large vast of consumers, and they look at you as, if you got a good relationship, great. But as soon as you mess that relationship up, everything related to that credit product and services starts to go in a completely different relationship, and then you start to find out how much your bank or your credit union really cares about you. So if we can keep you at this level, you never have to worry about that relationship going into an area where you don't want. So that's what leverage credit recovery is all about, teaching business mindsets for personal empowerment. So our vision is to continuously develop beyond the credit recovery protection, summary judgment, and education piece. We don't want to just educate you. We don't want to just make sure that you have good credit. We want to take you beyond that. We want to make sure that not only you, your family, your siblings, Everyone that's within your immediate circle understands that they themselves also have to do the work. So we want to put into your hands first what you then can take and bring it to the next generation. Because it's about not just us. Us older individuals, we understand our time is coming short. It's coming near. But when we can leave something behind for these younger generations, and then they can leave it behind for the next generation behind them, we start what we call a cycle of understanding. Everyone is out there doing what they need to be doing so that they have a proper understanding as to the financial mechanisms. Our goal is not to only enhance the opportunities of consumers to be financially stable, but to ultimately achieve their most significant. What I mean by that is that it's not just about credit. It's about being able to go to your boss and tell your boss, hey, I've been with you for 5, 10, 15 years. I've known what I've contributed to this business, but yet, you haven't compensated me properly. And it shouldn't be that anyone should ever not have to be able to go to their um, employer and tell their employer, I need a pay raise. And most employers nowadays look at their employees and go, pay raise? What's that? But everybody knows that the government operates on an increase every year. States operate on an increase every year. I met a young lady a couple of a months back, and she told me she worked for 12 or 13 years at the same company and didn't see one penny of an increase. That's not how our economies work. That's not how our situations work. We know what we contribute to businesses, so those businesses should equally be making sure that we're financially secured when it comes to all of those mechanisms. And what we teach here is not just solely about credit. It's about making sure that you can walk into your boss's office. It's not only that you can walk into your boss's office, that you can go to a car dealership and you can say, I got 30 minutes. I don't want to be sitting here for five and six and seven hours. I got 30 minutes. I already know what my credit score is. You got 30 minutes to get me out of here. 31 minutes, you should be looking at your watch, picking up, walking out. And the only reason why I can say that is because it happens in two occasions, happened already in two occasions. My sister Gail did it, and I as well did it. So it doesn't take, it more or less takes an understanding for us to be able to get through some of these things that we see as complexities. They're not complex. They're simple. We just have to want them. 
And finally, our mission is to educate the consumer beyond comprehension. Comprehension means is beyond your wildest imaginations as far as what you understand. Putting you out there first and foremost so that you can go and achieve and get those things that you want. We don't want to overindulge you with, with, with situations, but we want to make sure that you understand you have the power. You're the consumer, not the businesses. The businesses believe they have the power, but it's now up to us, the consumer, to take back some of those things that they thought they understood about us, the consumer. So it's really enhancing beyond the wildest comp um, comprehension so that you can litigate, negotiate, and recuperate from some of the many financial pitfalls and hardships that have been created by our financial systems. So what is a credit report? Anybody can tell me, anybody out there can tell me what a credit report is. Besides my young entrepreneurs, I know you guys know what a credit report is. So what's a credit report? Anybody? Anybody, please participate. This is not just about me talking and reading from a, a, a a PowerPoint, it's also about me engaging the audience, finding out what the audience knows. Because I can best help you when I understand what you don't know. Is the credit report the same as getting the credit report? Credit report is somewhat the same as getting, but the credit report is the data. So the credit score comes from data, as with everything. Got to go through the data. Once you have an understanding of the data, then it generates that credit score. But the credit report, as you can see, when you get ready to apply for certain items, these items that you apply for, whether it's a loan, whether it's a financial product in whichever regards, whether you're applying for a car, an apartment, sometimes it used to be that I think it was back in 2008 and they did away with that, 60% of all employers used to do financial background checks. They've done away with that because it was some form of segregation, I guess you can say, or discrimination that may have prevented certain individuals from being able to obtain jobs due to their credit understanding. But the credit uh, report itself is a combination of data. That data is collected. Once that data is collected, it's put into a system. That system then turns around and it generates what we like to call is the credit score. Your credit score is compiled of five areas. And I'm going to have my young entrepreneurs tell me those five areas. I'm going to start with uh, um, okay. your, go ahead. Yes, your payment history, which uh, Jose just mentioned. Your payment history is 35% of your overall credit score. 35%. So you got to think about that. 35% is a large amount of information that is compiled into your credit score. 35% is your payment history. How well have you been paying your debt? Uh, let me get someone else to give me the next highest. Brian? That's an available credit. And what is that? that what, is it, what else is it called? Um, um, yeah. How much utilization? Exactly. Yes, so if you look at those two areas, 35% and 30%, that's 65% of your overall score is in two areas. How well am I paying my debt and how much of my debt am I using? 65%. You're not going to be able to make it up from those other three areas. And those other three areas, Osama, could you tell me what they are? The other three areas are your, it's basically what type of credit you have, mm -hmm. how long you have had the credit, and the frequency of credit application. Thank you. So as Osama was mentioning, the rest of those <coughs> scores are so minimal. So if you're messing up in two of the largest areas, you're not going to be able to make up that 65% in those remaining three areas. It's just not going to happen. So you have to have a better understanding of my utilization, and you have to know, am I paying my bills on time? If you're not paying those bills on time, it will definitely lead into <coughs> other areas, and we'll talk more about those areas as we go through. So. These are your credit ranges. Clearly, we all know that we want to be up there by 780, 850. That means that you, wherever you go, whatever you want to do when it comes to a financial product or service, you're not going to have any problem whatsoever. Banks are going to have oh, arms wide open. 
expecting you, wanting you to come. So if we're obviously in that area right there, then we're excellent. But unfortunately, 77% of the population lives around the below average area. 77% of the population. These are friends within your immediate circles. These are colleagues that you go to work with. These are passive buyers. These are strangers that all reside within that below average area. So that tells you a lot about 330 million people in this country. You're looking at roughly somewhere around 240 million people that will not have the opportunity of obtaining a home, meaning living in a owned property. Will not. Will subject themselves to interest rates of 15% and higher. The banks are just waiting for those individuals to default, which puts them into even more complex situations. So with what we're doing, it's only about making sure that we have the resources that we need to be able to go out into the world and do what we're supposed to be doing, which is living. Too many of us right now are just existing, living paycheck to paycheck. Now, you can keep doing that, and then always wondering why, how come me, why? Or you can do something about it, which is what we provide to the public. Information. First, it starts with information. Once you have the information, then you can go back and you can do your own research. But after you do your own research, seek out somebody who can be the expert for you. Now, anybody in here, I know you feel ailing sometimes and you get a little hurt in some areas. Now, would you want to operate on yourself? No. I wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't want to take a scalpel, cut myself open, and figure I could do it on my own. That's not what we should be doing. We should be seeking out those who are experts. We should be seeking out those who can walk us through, or at least if we're, our lifestyles are too hectic, where we can't do it on our own, then we should find someone who can do it for us. Just do what I tell all of these guys in here as well. Hold them accountable. My consumers, I tell them, I'm going to hold you accountable to making sure that you're giving me the information so that I can keep giving you excellent service, but you have to hold me accountable to making sure that I'm doing what your expectations are. You're paying me ultimately, so shouldn't you be holding me accountable? I think it's a no-brainer. But credit scores range from 520, obviously, all the way up to 7, oh, excuse me, 850. And those credit scores really mean a lot when it comes to your interest rates. Because if you're down in that 520 area, would you possibly get credit? You probably wouldn't, but there might be some situations out there where you might be able to get it. But they're going to charge you such a high interest rate that you would more than likely not want to get it. Because if you get a 29% interest rate on anything, you're going to default. You're going to default. There is no getting around that. You're going to default. So it's better to be proactive than to be reactive. The more you understand about just those two pieces right there, proactive versus reactive, you're going to be perfectly fine. Getting out there beforehand. What's coming up in the next couple of months here? Christmas. Christmas. Holidays. <laughs> yes. Do you think Walmart, Target, Best Buy, all of these electronic stores, Apple, Dell, all these computer stores, do you think for a second that they're waiting? <coughs> no. They know you're ready. They're going to be putting those Black Friday events on. They're going to be making sure that all those circulars are filled, those newspapers are filled, those TV ads are filled, waiting for you. And they're going to lure you in with all kinds of, not, I don't like to call them gimmicks, but they're going to bring you in with all kinds of wows. Wow factor. Oh, I need that. Oh, I need that. Oh, I need that. And that's all you're going to be thinking. And as soon as you get in there, they're already training their associates to, we'll offer you 10%. Here's 10% off. You sign up for this. Here's 10% off. You sign up for that. Here's 10% off. Here's 10% off. Everywhere you go, mark my words. I did it for 28 years, so I know they're going to be luring you in with every possible thing that they can potentially get you to buy. So please, 
please, I, I, I'm, I'm giving you this as a warning. Don't do it. Do not fall for the 10%. Now, if they say 50%, you call me, because I'm coming down too. 50% <laughs> is definitely something that we can do, but 10%, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. You're going to get 10% off a product that they're going to charge you 24.99 for when you get that credit card. So that 10% didn't do nothing for you. Plus, you're going to take a hit to your credit report because you now got an inquiry. And you don't even know if you got improved. So you might not get approved for that 10% and you still took a, a hit to your credit report. It's not a wise decision. All right, we should be looking at gifting ourselves the gift of good credit. All right, yes, would I like to have that new Xbox? Absolutely. Would I like to have that curved, uh, what is it, Philips, I think it is, or Samsung TV? Yes, I most certainly would love to have it. I got a big apartment now that could, that, that could fit very nicely on that wall. Well, I wouldn't put it on the wall, but it would fit very nicely. But do I need it? Absolutely not, because I'm just as happy with my, what is it, 40, 50 inch fire TV that does just as fine and not putting myself in debt, because I went right out there, I paid cash for it. All right, so there's a lot of benefits too but there's a lot of negatives too as well. So we really got to be careful as to what we're doing when it comes to our credit understanding. So those scores really mean a lot. So what can be removed from your credit report? What are the items that most of us struggle with? Does anybody in the audience, I know you young entrepreneurs, you better know this, but anybody in the audience, can you tell me what some of those things that hinder your credit report? Anybody have an idea? Um, uh, late payments? Yes, late payments, absolutely. Anyone else? Anything else? Anyone? All right, young entrepreneurs, jump in there at any time. Tell me, what else? Excuse me? Charge off? What is a charge off? Exactly. So that means what he basically said is that a charge off is something that a lender has now taken off their books. It's no longer a item to them. They're basically saying we're not going to collect on it. It's more or less a damaged item. It's a damaged good. So if you went into your favorite store and you, uh, whatever it is, a, a, a rack and it fell over and now all that stuff is damaged, they, the owner or the operator of that location now gets to say, we're going to write it off. They can't call the vendor and say, oh, uh, this is all damaged. We're not going to pay you for it. No, the vendor's going to look at them and say, not my problem. They can't look at the consumer if a consumer may have knocked it over or bumped into it. Can't look at the consumer and say, hey, ever, by the way, you knocked that over. You got to pay for this. Ever going to look at me and say, I don't think so. So there has to be a mechanism out there that's been designed for consumers to charge or businesses to charge things off when they are damaged. And the same thing happens when it comes to financial products and services. Those things are damaged when an individual chooses not to make their payments. So that means that they can write these items off. It's called a charge off. So here's some of the things that we can um, remove from credit reports. Jose said charge off Osama, what else? Collections. Now collections is, what is a collections Osama? That is correct. It's a past due delinquent account that the original lender has now said, we're done with it. They normally charge off things about 120 days, but they can charge it off after 30 days. Not, they don't have a set rule as to when, but normally they like to wait until four months has passed, then they charge those items off. So once it goes from a charge off, it goes into a collection. So collections is a collection agency. There's the collection bureaus out there. The debt collection industry is huge. Debt is sold and bought on a regular basis. It is huge. People with deep pockets are buying it. Law firms are buying it. It's not the original creditor when you get that phone call thinking, oh, oh that we're collecting for the original creditor. They're not collecting for the original creditor. They're collecting for themselves. And they're buying debt at four cents on the dollar. So they're turning around telling you you still owe the original creditor, but in all actuality, that's not the truth. 
but we'll talk way more about that as time goes on. But you got to remember, once that debt is in the hands of the collector, you're not liable any longer. The contractual arrangement has been dissolved. That collector is just trying to collect for themselves. So please be careful when you get those phone calls. Uh, we got collections. What else? Stephen. Uh, hard inquiries. Hard inquiries. The things that we love to do. We love to ask, can I, can I, can I, can I please, can I please, please, can I? So we go out there and we write all our information down on the inquiry form, and now you're doing it online. So it takes 30 seconds. 30 seconds for what? To get rejected? That's exactly what it is. These are done now by algorithms. You don't get to talk to individuals any longer. You don't get to have these conversations. How you doing, Mr. Wade? Nice to see you come into my office today. Take a seat. It's not like that any longer. It's all online. So there's the computers making the decision. You're not making the decision. And they're using algorithms to basically kind of set you up. Because those algorithms are designed. They're looking for the Tyrone Glovers. Now, that's not very simple name. That seems like a name that has a little bit of color to it. <laughs> prestige. Just a bit. Or Just prestige, a bit. yes. I like that even better. But you get my point. Yeah. It's not about what we put down on paper. It's about what's now being viewed in a completely different mechanism than what we are, were accustomed to. A lot of us in this room probably can attest to stories that mom and dad used to say, oh, I went down to the bank and sat with John or Jim and was able to get the loan or refi or whatever it is that they were, were attempting to do because they had that hand-to-hand -hand type of situation. It's not like that any longer. So we got to be really, really careful. This credit game is no joke. It's dead serious. Dead serious. What else? There's one more that I want that somebody missed. Alexis, tell me. Bankruptcies. Okay. Now, bankruptcies is something that we all probably may at some point when we thought the debt was getting too high. Ooh, might want to consider bankruptcy. Might want to consider bankruptcy. That's not the right thing to do. <coughs> not. And now that the laws have changed, bankruptcy is getting harder and harder and harder and harder to do. So you got to make sure that you have assets before you go bankrupt. So why, well, why put yourself in a predicament where you don't even need to when you can take some pre proactive steps to make sure that you're not there? All right. Who else back there can tell me another thing that we might, might want to enlighten these folks to? Jose? Judgments. Judgments, yes. Once an item goes through charge-off, once an item hits that collections, you decide not to answer that phone call or you decide not to answer that letter that comes in the mail that basically says you have 30 days to respond. If you choose not to respond, then we're going to hold you accountable and we're going to make automatically assume that this is your debt. You let that happen, it goes to the hands of the courts. The courts is now looking at you. And if the courts is looking at you, that means that there's a judge back there getting ready to hit that gavel and say, ah, oh, it's time. So that is what we call a judgment. I don't think this is. I don't think this is on. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So a judgment is, as uh, was indicated, it's something that goes through the hands of the courts. The courts is making a judge decision or a judgmental decision about whether or not you owe this debt. And as I indicated before. There's not precedence, there's not enough precedence in the courts in order for them to be ruling in your favor. You gotta think about this, for 30, 40 years, defendants never showed up to court. They didn't respond to their letters, they didn't show up to court, so the courts basically now is just siding with the businesses. If you don't know how to fight it, what are you gonna do? You're just putting yourself further and further and further in debt. Once it turns into a judgment, that becomes a public record that stays on your credit report for seven to 10 years. Now, that seven to 10 year piece seems a little bit scary, but the law says an item can stay on your credit report. Now, there's a difference, and as a teacher, I like that difference because can is not a definitive word, must is more a definitive word. So if somebody tells me something can be there, doesn't necessarily mean that I have to stay, keep it there. I can get it off too. 
That's why I'm training all of these guys to understand that. That's why I've been working so diligently at this for the past four and a half years so that I can tell you guys, why are you keeping it on there? There's nothing in the law that states that you have to keep it there. It's totally up to you. It's totally up to you. You just got to get, get out of your way, find those experts that know how to do it, Go to those experts and have them do it for you. Hold those experts accountable because you, again, are paying them. If I'm paying somebody my money, I need to make sure that they're doing the job. If they're not doing the job, there's no problem with me going back to them and tell them, thank you very much, but you haven't been doing what I need you to do. I'm getting ready to go somewhere else. And too many of us stay in bad situations for no reason, none at all. We've got to be a bit more proactive instead of just reactive. So as we go over, uh, as we have gone over what we can remove from the credit reports, you've got to remember, it's up to the consumer. The consumer has more power than they know. There are five consumer protection acts out there that protects us. And the one bureau that really makes sure that we're doing the right thing is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So we're kind of like what I like to call, we're the watchdog who watches the watchdog. Okay, a little small, little institution that does basically what the big guys do, but we're now making sure that the big guys are taking care of you. Sometimes it's better to be a David than a Goliath. Just how I look at it. Thanks. All right, where do I get my credit report? So that's the big question that we get all the time. How do I get my credit report? What's the one, what's a couple of the items that I can use? Privacy guard? That is annual credit report. Excellent, thank you, Jose. Yes, there is the annual credit report that you can get free. If the government is telling you to do something for free, once a year, that means they must be on to something. That means they must know something more about this situation than they're letting on. So they're basically putting it out there. Go check it out once a year, annualcreditreport.com. We like to use uh, Privacy Guard. Privacy Guard works well with our integrated system. We also use Identity IQ, and we also use another program which is called credit check total. These all just work well with us. We don't get any money from them. We prefer not to have any money from them because when you're doing that type of a situation, there's always a quid pro quo. We'd like to keep our hands completely clean from those types of situations, but they just work very well with our systems. Oh, there was one more. So that's Entity IQ, there's the Privacy Guard, and then there's the credit check total. The, as I stated, the Government site is the annualcreditreport.com. That one works very, very well. It's a little bit complicated. Sometimes if you don't answer those questions properly, what ultimately could happen is that they'll not send you your report. Then you'll have to go on. I mean, you have to use the phone to call in, have them then generate it in that manner. But why go through all of that? You have now a community that is now behind you. You have now a family that wants to make sure that your family is okay. So again, don't put it out there. If you can't do it, come to us. Let us know how we can help you because not only can we help you, we want to help you. Go ahead to the next one. So I wanted to keep it brief. I really wanted to get my young entrepreneurs more involved into the discussion piece. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over to them. I'm going to have you guys, and I'm going to sit in the audience as well, and we're going to ask them questions, see if they know the job, see if they know or, or if they're up to the task of making sure that they can handle your, your, your concerns and your situation. So can I get all of my young entrepreneurs right up front? Um, good, evening, good evening, everybody. Um, does anybody have any question about credit? Yep. Yes, you, sir. Um, I recommend you to, to go to Privacy Guard. Is for the for the first 14 days is free, not free, but you have to pay a dollar. But they will give you all your information and about your credit score, credit report, everything. Not only the, would they give you your credit score, they will give you your 
credit report and your and your audit. Okay. And so let's say I get that back and then I'm not excellent, which I thought I was. I think I'm excellent. Um, and, and now I don't know what to do. Well, that's when we come in play. Okay. So um, we'll sit down with you, show you. Um, there's always, like, at the top of the credit report, there's always information of your history. So there's addresses, numbers, I mean, your phone numbers. So then we'll just show you, and we'll tell you to first look through the papers and see if that's actually you, because most of the times, um, you can always get confused with another person, because you may have the same name as someone else in the world, because there's a lot of people. And then just by one social, like, your social security number are all numbers, but just by one number, a company can, like, mistaken it and put it as on you, which is probably not even you. So first, we'll tell you, um, check the information, and if it's you, then we'll go through each um, each page of your credit report and tell you um, how can we help you. Okay, this last question, sorry, Steve, I said the name. Don't worry about it. But you guys have gotten excited about this is being excellent. And so let's just say I have an average credit score, maybe I'm, and, and one of the other said maybe I'm below average. What should realistically manage my expectations to get to a, an excellent or above average? What would be a, a reasonable time frame in working with me that I could potentially get there? Well, first, what we always tell um, clients is if you're going to continue and be with us, just don't, let's say if you have more, try to keep your inquiries less than six per year. Per per year. year. <laughs> but if you have excessive inquiries, what we tell you when you're with us, don't do inquiries while you're with us because that basically kind of interrupts our process. So if they see, if we're trying to help you out, but behind us you're still asking for credit, why would we help you if you're still messing it up. So there's no point for you just to come here and waste your time with us. And we don't want to waste our time <coughs> if there's cli um, clients who <coughs> don't want to listen to us. And I'm going to ask you to have 30 days to respond to certain items. And if they don't do it within that 30 day time period, then that item can come off. They can ask for an additional 15 days. So we really want to tell our consumer that you could probably be in the cycle for about six to nine months. It's up to the consumer. I wish I could honestly say it's up to us or it's up to the bureaus, but it's really not it's up to the consumer. If they're consistent in how they're responding, and that's what we're here to do. If they're holding us accountable, we're definitely going to be holding them accountable to that consistency. So it's about every 45 days, roughly, could take anywhere from six to nine months. If it goes longer than that, that means somewhere the ball has been dropped. And you shouldn't feel that we're dropping the ball, we shouldn't feel that you're dropping the ball. Let's stay on point, let's stay consistent, as Jackson has said. There's many, many factors. The inquiry piece is one of those pieces that definitely is a hindrance because most people will be going through the process, but then they'll start doing things that goes against the process, which is going out there and inquiring. You can't do that. That goes against the grain. So just to make sure I understand. No, it is possible. It is possible. Nothing is impossible. Oh, it is 100% possible within a year. Within a year. I'm at a credit score right now of all the way across the board, 730. But a year ago, I was at 520. And all it was was just getting out of my own way, doing some of those necessary steps that I was suggesting to consumers, and now putting them to work for myself. And yeah. believe me, before that, I wasn't even credit worthy because I kept making the same mistakes. Anybody else? Uh, I'm going to talk about something that happened to me that I found out once I became part of Leverage. Purchase a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Found out looking at my credit report that Ford had ran my credit six different times. It, six, it showed up six different places on my credit report where they had ran it. And every time they run your credit report, it decreases your yeah. score. So uh, I want you to talk about how important it is to not allow somebody, if you go to Sears or Walmart, anybody like that, to run your credit, you know, because of how much it hurts you, uh, and you don't even know. Okay, so it depends, because like, you could give them authorization to be on your credit score right. or credit report, or you can co-sign it, which means having somebody else deal with your credit score. And if you're gonna do that, you have to like sign a paper that will say, 
if you mess on my credit card, I could sue you. If you don't pay this, I could sue you. Blah blah. You could be, you won't be held accountable for it. So in that case, your credit card won't get messed up, and you could hold them accountable, but not you. Uh, another thing is, you can always ask, um, who are they gonna, how are they gonna run your credit score? Because sometimes you don't ask, and they just send it to one company, one another company, and they all keep just running it, and that it decreases by a hundred points or less, or probably more. So you have to always ask, oh, how are you going to run my credit or who, who is going to run my credit? And let me add to that, you don't necessarily have to give anyone the okay. If you go and you're already part of a credit, uh, shall we say, like Privacy Guard or Identity IQ, or you have just received your credit report from Annual Credit Report, you can basically bring that to the card dealer. You can say, I don't need you to run my credit. I got everything I need right here. If they want to do business with you, ultimately, they'll do business with you. They don't need to have that information. And plus, once they run or once they see your score, they know your range already. So why are they going to consistently, constantly keep running? It's for their benefit. They have a relationship with whatever institution that they're running it from. And if they then decide to, you go with that ultimate institution, they're getting a kickback. So it's important for us as consumers to now become a bit more business savvy. We're dealing with businesses all the time. So credit is just another business. Equifax is a billion dollar company. TransUnion is a billion dollar company. Uh, Experian is a billion dollar company. And they make millions of dollars worth of errors. And when you're making billions, millions don't mean anything. So it's you who has to be a bit more understanding about, wait a minute, let me put the brakes here. Do I need to go out and get this car, or is it a car that I want? So if I go out and I want it, then clearly, yes, I need to be making sure that I'm not going to be harmed in that process. Obviously, if you need it, then you should be doing that, what we've already mentioned, which is being more proactive, doing a 30-day 30, 30 search or a 60-day search before I go out there and then attempt to start shopping. Making sure that the price range of what it is that I'm looking for is within our budgetary understanding. Don't go out and get a $45,000 car when your budget is only $20,000, because that's going to hurt you. Then you're definitely going to be brought to an area where you don't want to be. Anyone else? Business These guys credit. are sharp. What is business credit? What is business credit? I'll answer the business credit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Business credit is just another form of personal credit. It's now you're basically stating that you're an entity. You're an entity that is going to reside outside of what my personal items are, and I'm now going to put it all into a business aspect. So you get a different business understanding, and you got a whole new area of how credit works. Because now they're looking at you not as just a person, but they're looking at you as an entity. So business credit is huge for small businesses, huge for LLCs, all of those businesses. They get certain and different rates, whereas a consumer might reside in a, as we showed earlier, that 850 to 520 businesses' credits are still under the A, B, C, D type of understanding. It's not the actual number system. And we used to be at the A, B, C, D type of situation until we reverted over to a number system. So business credit is for, again, individuals who would like to operate outside of their personal realm and now focus just on their business. So if people will repair their personal credit using business credit? That is absolutely right. Okay. Yes, because when you're just starting out as a business, that business itself doesn't have any credit. So it's going to need right. to leverage off of the personal credit, and you obviously want to make sure that your personal credit is fine. Once you've created that business relationship, then you can remove your personal aspects from it, and you can focus solely just on the business. Yes, so yes, it's going to always take your uh, personal credit first, then it's going to combine with your business credit. There's a lot of companies out there now that are saying we can do it without. Sorry. 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 Not somebody going to have to. Somebody some personal. Exactly. Some personal information is going to be needed, and your personal credit obviously is going to have to be in a realm in which they can say, sure, we don't mind now uh, extending your business credit. You just got to build that relationship. Anybody else? I can take it. I can take it. Mm -hmm. 
yes, yes, yes. I'll take Just, the floor. Yes. A FICO score is a score. My apologies. Yes, my FICO, uh, well, the FICO score is a score that's generated, uh, again, electronically by means of algorithms, and they are generated mainly for the consumer to have an understanding of where I reside. Now, a, score, uh, a report is something different. FICO is the only one that generates the scores. They disseminate those scores to Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. So you're going to only get your score from one area. There's another scoring mechanism out there. It's called the Vantage score. And sometimes you'll see that in TransUnion. But for the most part, you're getting your FICO score. And that's always from the Fair Isaac Corporation. So if I just score it to who, you mean? No, no, no. They use, they use Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian all use your FICO score. Oh. There's one company out there that uses, exactly, exactly. There's one company, and I believe it's TransUnion, they use the Vantage scoring, scoring mechanism. But they're all pretty much, it's proprietary information. We as consumers don't get to get that knowledge or that understanding as to how these scores are being generated. So it's really important to understand who is providing it. That's FICO. Also, they have a great website that gives you a lot of good information. But again, the experts, the people who know how to do it, those are the ones that you really should be looking to when it comes to the understandings. Trust is so important. If you don't trust the individuals, if they're giving you a, a shady this, shady that, I'm about information. I'll talk to you all day long and won't ask you for one penny. But when it comes down to the meat and potatoes of what needs to be done, then you have to decide. You're going to pay me or you're going to pay somebody else. I would rather you pay me knowing that it's going to be done in the right manner than going out there getting it done or finding out that you're not getting it done. We're dealing with a situation right now where this company was supposedly taking care of their clients and we found out that they were not taking care of their clients. So the clients are, you know, obviously and rightfully upset. But again, they're now giving us the opportunity to now get set the record straight for them. So. I hope we answered that question. The FICO score is, three sc is one score, but it's being provided by all, to, or being provided to all three of the, um, the agencies, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. So Equifax Fair Isaac Corporation. <laughs> Fair Isaac Corporation. Isaac. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm madly in love with this job. Yes, I, I, I believe. Yes, we yes, yeah, and it, exactly. You're. Um, you're what? Okay, collection agency. When you work with collection agents, when you, when they send you, when you get those calls from the collection agency, and they're asking you, you know, for money, should I would suppose, or I bet, I say, I bet that you don't, that you don't, you shouldn't pay the collection agency. Yeah, that's true. You never have to, yeah, you never have to pay the collections agency because, yeah. You yeah, they, that, that's what they do. The collections, they call you and they basically tell you that you have to pay them. But in reality, you don't have to because the, where you got your credit from, they already dealt with your credit. These people, the collections agencies, they bought your credit for cheap. And now they want you to pay them the full price, but you don't have to. Yeah, there's no law. That no one told them to, to go buy it, yeah. so you never have to pay a collections agency. And I, would, I read oh. that, but I wanted to confirm it. Also, mm -hmm. well, give me one second. I would uh, elaborate a little bit more on that because again, the contractual relationship that you had with your original lender, as soon as they charge that off, it's done. And uh, looking at your credit report, that's when you'll know it is stated in there: charge off, write off. That's the liquidated piece that that item has been reduced or it has been 100% recouped by that business through the government means in which we do profit and loss. So it's, you're being guilted into a lot of these situations that you don't understand. So yes, when you get those phone calls, I tell everybody, don't run from the phone, run to the phone. Yeah, 
answer those phone calls. Get those individuals to send you documentation. Once they send you documentation, we can then jump back in and help you with making sure that they're not collecting on that. Now, we want to be responsible individuals. So if they go out and they buy this debt, again, we still understand that we created that debt. So if they buy it, knowing that the enti entity that where they bought it from has been recouped, we should be honorable and say, hey, you know what? I'll give you the four cents on the dollar on that debt. But you gotta then do something for me. If I'm gonna give you four cents on the dollar, you gotta clean up the information that's on my credit report. You gotta take all of that stuff off. You gotta show it now as being positive. Okay. You, they have, you know they're about the company. Talking about the company, the collection agency. Do they, do they do that? What they do that? Again, everything is a negotiation. Oh. You have to, as a consumer, know exactly how to negotiate. They don't like to speak to consumers because consumers are a bit so wishy-washy. Like, yeah, you know? so that, 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 right? uh, well, seven to 10 years. If you don't do anything, it will so stay on there for seven to 10 years, absolutely. Oh. The whole disputing process is about this. Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian have to pay a fee. Or excuse me, Equifax, TransUnion have to collect the fee from, say, a Target, a Walmart, a, uh, whatever store card, whatever bank, whatever it is, they have to collect the fee. Now, if that entity is not making money off of you because you decided now to default on that loan, they're not going to want to keep paying that fee. So it's about the dispute process. You have to dispute. If you don't dispute it, It'll stay there. It'll stay there for that duration of seven to ten years. And Equifax and TransUnions constantly make mistakes, so they really don't. So you can dispute that. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Yep. That's what these individuals have okay. learned to do. That I did not know. So what I did was that I, instead of consolidating, which is not good, I went to the next distributor. Is that the one you Now, oh, okay. horror okay. stories. <laughs> horror stories no about idea. debt relief and consolidating. It's, it doesn't work. It does not work. Because one, you're paying somebody to do something that they're not really going to do, which is lower those interest rates. They're putting all your debt now together into one lump payment or supposedly one lump payment. And that lump payment is not going to, all of that lump payment is not going to where it should be going. I did it. And uh, again, it was one of my frustrations that led me into now creating my own business, which was I went through the same thing. I said, let's find this place over here. We went to it. It was like $329. Of the $329, $29 was going to the debt. 300 of it was going into somebody else's pocket. You can negotiate yourself right out of that as well. Everything is a negotiation by calling them and telling them, saying, hey, or you can use myself yeah. to help you with uh, speaking with them. Uh, they're not quite up to that level yeah. yet, but we're hoping that within the next year, they'll definitely be up to that level. And having someone on the phone. Mm -hmm. they Consumers love us, businesses hate us because we speak their speech. We talk their language. Please. The more debt you have, the more time you have to clean it up. Uh, again, say that again. The more debt you have, the more time it takes to clean it up, or it depends how consistent you are. And there it is. That's the whole part of it right there, the consistency. As long as you are doing it every 45 days, you got to remember that. 30-day limit is what the government is basically That's telling you. Exactly. 45 days could be additional information, but as long as you're doing something every yeah, 45 days. Well, that's where, exactly. We are just hoping that the consumer compiles all the information, puts it into a file. Once all the items come in, then they say, hey, you know what? I got 30 minutes or I got 40 minutes on a Saturday or a Friday to come over or sit down. We'll go over what the findings are. If we need to generate new uh, dispute letters at that time, we'll print out new dispute letters. When you leave, every transaction, when you deal with us, you're leaving with new information that you can mail out. So it's not that you have to stop your life or anything in that regards. Nope, you continue to keep living. It's just that we're requiring 
in that 45 day period that we have a half an hour or an hour window to be able to sit down with you, show you the updates, get new information in your hand. You walk out of our office, walk across the street, drop it in the post office, you continue your life as, as it is. Or if you're a consumer like myself who just needs to learn everything, we'll have a, we're gonna be offering a training class next year that literally is going to be helping consumers do exactly what we do. Because this is something that everybody in the audience can do. You can do this all on your own. You just have to have an understanding. Okay, so this is, this is free for consumer or do they have to pay? In which regards free? Like, um, I would say for service. Mm -hmm. All of our young entrepreneurs have the opportunity of having two of their family members receive their uh, credit situation free of charge. Okay. Our, go ahead. And everyone else? Everyone else. There is a cost as with everything as a business. We have to obviously keep the doors open, keep the lights on, keep the uh, Xboxes and Playstations <laughs> going so what, as well. startups, you're going to go through those ups and downs. So we're definitely going to get into an area where these youngsters are not going to have that situation where it's, it seems like that they're, they're not. But they, trust me, our food cost is through the roof. Our transportation cost is through the roof. So there's some gives and takes in so many areas. Yeah. And we always make sure, one, that when they're there, that they have plenty to eat. And That's number one. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. So, so that's yes, that's and we appreciate. That's, that's what I see. We appreciate all I'm the parents who are involved. We appreciate that. Thank you so much for that. That really means that really means a lot. Oh, well, again, all of these individuals here are someone's child, and again, for leverage credit recovery, for their parent, for those parents to trust in me, it, it, it would be outside of me to do anything less than to make sure one, as I stated, that they ha always have something to eat, that they yeah. never leave with on an empty stomach. That obviously during the daytime they can make their own way because the site the sun is out, and we don't really fear that. But at night, making sure that they have that transportation back home. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's bigger than me, and I need, obviously, individuals like these young men who see the vision, as you as well see the vision. Without decent credit, it's not going to happen. Uh, can you just, if someone could elaborate, you said it a couple of times, you're not responding in 30 or 45 days. I'm not sure. I heard that. I'm not sure. I don't really know what you're saying. Want me? All right. So. What I mean by that is that 30 days is what the government basically says. For the Fair Credit Reporting Act, it basically states that the entities that you're disputing with, they have 30 days to respond. So you're going to be sending your responses to Equifax TransUnion Experience. Now, 
The government also says that Equifax Transgender Experian can also ask for an additional 15 days. So what we set up our process to not literally charge a consumer every 30 days. We want a consumer to actually get some benefit back. So we, they, we're giving a snapshot of their credit report, snapshot of their audit, snapshot of everything that we can provide. So when that 40 day, 45 day window comes back around, you'll now see part number one. Now you're looking at part number two. So again, then before you have to come out of pocket, we go in a whole nother 45 days. So you got three opportunities. You have the first part, second part, and the third part. So you're seeing success all the way through first, second, and third before you even have to reach out and go, here you go. Where most businesses do it every 30, plus they're inside your bank account, they're doing ACHs, they're pulling that money out immediately, whether you have results or no results. We do not operate like that. We find that that to be more of a hindrance than it is a plus. We don't chase consumers down, as I stated, 45 days. If you're not reaching out to me in 45 days, we have a follow-up mechanism that allows for us to reach out to you. But after that 45th or that 46th day, if you haven't given us the necessary response, we can't keep running after individuals who don't want to help themselves. You have to want to help yourself first and foremost. And we'll give you everything. I tell these guys all the time. We will help you build that platform. We'll give you the wood, we'll give you the cement, we'll give you the wheelbarrow, we'll give you the shovel. We'll even come out and we'll kind of help you with smoothing it out for you. But under no circumstance will we build your house. We won't. We will not build your house. Now, if you want gold toilet bowls like Donald Trump and anything else, <laughs> whatever you want, we'll make sure that you have it but we will not build it for you. We'll give you the platform. You can build a shack or you can build an elaborate palace, but we will not build the house for you. We'll get every step of the way, making sure that this, that whatever level, gauge, mechanism, whatever it is that you need, we're there to provide it for you. We'll help you along the way. That's where the expertise comes from, but building it for yourself, Got to leave it in your hands because then that shows us the commitment that you have to your success. We can't want your success more than you. Yeah, what about business leases? When you deal with business, I know you take credit. Mm -hmm. What about business that has uh, leases and uh, has problems with the lease? Trying to negotiate uh, a new lease, as you just said, uh, some creditors sell their, uh, uh, their existing leases. Yeah, to leasing companies. Mm -hmm. Do you deal with that also? The, the main thing that everyone has to realize and understand is that it's about how you negotiate. Most consumers don't have the where for all. They don't start speaking the same language. So it's automatically the, the lender is going to put you in an awkward position. They're going to start looking at your history. Well, you didn't pay this long for this amount of time. So they're going to really come at you and guilt you into, one, not having a good understanding, and two, probably putting yourself into a predic predicament where it might not be favorable for you. So we don't deal necessarily with business leases, but we can help you with negotiating a proper business lease. Because again, you're talking to someone who's been doing this for 28 years. So they probably wouldn't want to talk to me because now I'm helping you. They want to take advantage of you. So why would you come to somebody who, who, why would they want you to come to somebody who's going to help you so that you can go out and get a favorable rate for yourself? All right, so it's all in negotiations, all in negotiation. Can that lender, that lease, can they give you the favorable terms? Absolutely. But it's just how you go about speaking to them and getting those favorable terms. I hope I answered your question. Yes, sir. I um, try to explain it to get out to me. Absolutely. And I have to run. Um, but Tyrone is my nephew. And like you said, he's been doing this for 28 years or longer. He comes from a very large family. And I know for a fact that he has helped so many members in my family, some who have now moved away is so good and are living very comfortably in the South and different places. Um, and um, so he's skillful. He knows what he's talking about.
talking about, and I'm just so proud that he has taken what he knows and what he believes in, and now has built or is is building an empire with these students and you know helping them. All I see is that um, there's much more to come. There's so much more. This thing is going to be so much bigger than you guys could ever imagine. A phone call, we had death in our family. It's one of um, Anthony, Tyrone's, uh, that's his brother Anthony, uh, his uh, aunt. And um, so I have to run now. Um, but I, I love you, man. <laughs> The one good thing about credit is that it, it's, it's technology now. Technology helps us. We all have smart devices. 90% of my clients now, I don't even know. When we're looking at opening that platform as well with doing some more literally online classes that allow us to sit in front of a computer screen and have 15, 20 different monitors that are looking back at us while we teach them how to do that. So it's, we're, we're, we're looking at multiple means of how do we help the consumer. We obviously want to help our community first. It's always home, take care of home first. Once home is taken care of, then you can branch out. We're looking, we have a goal set for uh, it would be nice to achieve it at the end of 2018, but that's probably not going to happen. So we're going to stretch it out to the 2019. We want to have, by 2019, 5,000 clients. 5,000 clients. Real quick. I just wanted to say something to what Tony said. Uh, I have a cousin in North Carolina. I called him up because I've been dealing with Tyrone for quite a while. My cousin has a business, does not have good credit. I got him in touch with Tyrone. He was about to file bankruptcy, mm -hmm. okay? He said, I'm not filing bankruptcy now because there's a couple things Tyrone helped him with. He was so happy with the information to be able to understand what he was looking at and how to fix it. It's mostly about what you, we're not in the know. Right. That's why we deal with them. But once you get in the know and you get to sit, and like I did when I looked at that computer screen and said, what? And then I made a couple of moves and my credit score went up. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm good. I'm good. You know what I mean? It's like a, it's like a, a junkyard dog finding a meaty bone. <laughs> you know, I just sank my two teeth in it and stayed with it because it meant something. It gave me an opportunity to see my future better than I ever thought it would and that it was going to come to me in a quicker span than the 20 years I still had planned ahead. So that's to answer your question about dealing with people down south. That's what, you know, and my cousin, I just got on, I just got off the phone with him before I came here. He's still smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, the young lady, we've been not overlooking you. <laughs> my apologies. Cool. Good. Um, I know, especially for the black community, um, FCC, um, they don't really come out for credit repair um, for uh, privacy issues. Mm -hmm. Well, one, I have to tell them, uh, if the bad guy wanted your information, they already have it. So that's first and foremost. Second is that most of the sites that you're dealing with have to have that HTTPS. So that's more, that S on the HTTP is basically telling you that it's secured. All of our sites are secured. So we're dealing with nothing but the highest level of protection. So yeah, as you said, it's, it's about getting the word out. It's about... Internally. That's what I mean, internally. Oh, as far as us are concerned, these guys know 100% that I don't operate below the law. 
I operate at the highest level of the law. So we do not compromise anyone's information. We're protected on so many levels. One, f internally, that they have to understand that we don't do that. We do not share information. We keep all their information top notch in the most securest possible means. So I, I hope I'm answering your question. We take security very serious. Uh, uh, confidentiality uh, agreements, yeah. you ha we're, we're more or less, when we communicate back and forth with an email or some form of an exchange of emails, we're already locked into a, 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 an understanding. Our trust in you as your trust in us is that we don't share. Now, who was also locked into right. confidentiality mechanisms? Equifax. And what happened to Equifax? They didn't even tell you. What happened to Target? They didn't even tell you. What happened to all of these, as I stated, Goliath that didn't even think it was worth your time for you to know. But a little slap on the wrist from the government, 20, 30 million dollars for the CEO to retire. He'll sit out for about two or three years, get hired by another company, and what then happens? So the security mechanisms that are, we are, we're thinking are secured in protecting us really aren't. It's about you trusting me as me trusting you to make sure that your information is secure and that these individuals understand it's not about us. I can't make more money off of you if I hurt you. I can't grow my business off of the potential customers that you might bring my way because I've helped your situation if I put you in harm's way. So our ultimate number one approach is do no harm. All right, so I hope I answered that question. These guys, being that they're still within the age group of, they can't really sign confidentiality uh, agreements. They have to be of the 21 years. So once they're at that 21 years, that's more than likely something that we will be venturing on. I'm already protected under every sense of the law. So ultimately, leverage credit recovery is protected. So I think that was more why I was asking. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And they cannot sign. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not saying it's happening. Oh, no, no. But I'm just speaking for. And we love this. This is exactly what we love. Yeah. So for the community, if you're telling me I'm giving you my social, mm -hmm. and now they have access to my social, but they cannot sign anything because they're under 21, who's to say that one of them will not take the information yeah. and use it for well. something other than. It's a concern. Of the community. Exactly. Absolutely. And the black community is very private. Yeah. So the, the, the young men that you're showing, I'm glad that they're a part of the process because they're learning at an early age. But when you're talking about adults and then they're the faces that you're showing, that would be a major concern. Yeah. Right. Because legally, you can't hold them responsible. Absolutely. Then that. To make that 100%, we don't hold on to your social security number. We don't take any of your information and keep it in-house. We only deal with your last four. We make sure that you have all of the information when you go on to Privacy Guard or Credit Check Total or um, Identity IQ. You're putting all that information in. You're just sharing with me. Exactly. We do not want... Right. We do not want to have any of your personal information because of, as you just mentioned, those concerns. We don't do that because it's better for us to make sure that you understand I can only help you with what you share with me. And I don't want to have that burden or I don't want to have that misunderstanding of you giving me your information and then having second thoughts down the road as to what's going on now with my information. So. Everything is in your hands. Only thing that we ask for is that whatever you get as a report that allows for us to then put it into our systems and generate what we need to generate for you, that's the only thing that we need from you. We don't need your social security number. And that's one of those things that we've been doing for eons. We've been giving our information away to people for the weirdest of reasons. You go to the dentist. What does your dentist need with your social security number? What does your auto mechanic need with your social security number? I just was just last 75 because I went to one in Canada. I don't. Mm -hmm.
Yes, we should not be sharing the information that we have been sharing. But since we never knew, we go right in there, fill it all out, and give it to a perfect stranger. Even on job. Even on jo another one, too. You don't have to put your social security number down on a job. But again, because we've been programmed and trained that if I don't put it down, now the employers think I'm trying to hide something. It has nothing to do with hiding anything. It has more to do with I don't know you. I would like to know you, but before I get to know you, I'm only going to give you a little bit of information. It's like a date. Tyrone, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. do you recommend, let's say, one of us gets a part-time job, do you recommend us to put our Social Security? As I just indicated, again, I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm also saying do it because of the fact that you got to look at that employer. That person on the opposite end is going to be thinking to themselves, why isn't this person wanting to put down a Social Security number? But now that you know what you know, you're probably thinking now, well, I really shouldn't put it down because you're going to go and you're going to do stuff. You're going to look at my credit. You're going to look at this. You're going to make job decisions about information that I haven't shared with you, but information that you've gathered from a third or a fourth party. And Josh, are uh, looking at your credit history now. Well, tech. Technically, they can't. That's against the law. They cannot. They cannot. That is against the law. Yes, I think it was as you can sue them. Yes, you have to sign an authorization. But again, if you don't sign that authorization, do you think you're getting that job? Nope. Exactly. So and it's the one other, of the. The other good thing about that is once we are empowered with the information, we'll know our credit exactly. status. So when we go into an interview, it's exactly. not an issue whether yes. what you're searching yeah. for, I already know. Medium, yeah. good, or, or, or great. So security is always tops and foremost within what I do. I am a soldier. I've been in the military. I was in the military for four years and nine months. I understand the Constitution, and my biggest thing is, is that we're not fighting foreign enemies. We're fighting more domestic enemies. So we really now have to focus on how do I protect my community. So going into the community, I'm the product of Yonkers, born and raised here in Yonkers, not raised in Yonkers. I traveled the world did some amazing things, and now I'm actually, this is a God calling for me. He sent me back to Yonkers. I said that I was never coming back to Yonkers. <laughs> so he said, okay, yeah, all right, you take that. Think as much as you want about me. Yep. He, yep, exactly. My plan then is God's plan. He made me spend every last penny. And these guys will attest, how many times, how many times have I told you I came back to Yonkers with how much? $200. <laughs> Yes, literally, $200 in my pocket. So, I mean, to do what I've been able to do in the short period of time that I've been able to do it, I'm only looking at what more can I do. And with the help of these young entrepreneurs, it's not up to me any longer. I'm literally putting it into their hands. I've told them I can do everything that I can do, but ultimately, they have to be our sharers. They have to be our deliverers. They have to be the ones who are the voice and now soon to be the face of Leverage Credit Recovery. I'm still going to be the content provider. I'm still going to do as the CEO, but ultimately, it's up to them. And the money doesn't go to the top. The money gets distributed evenly. Obviously, we have to run the business, so the business has to have its little piece here. But for the most part, they start off at a paid. From that paid, they go to $70 a client. From that $70 client, they go to $130 a client. So it's about putting money into their pockets because as much as I don't think I should say it, but I say it all the time, I'm competing with the drug dealer. <laughs> I'm competing with that individual who's really putting our children in harm's way because there's no opportunity there. Yeah, you get a little bit of money, but the risk is huge. Right. It's huge. Right. And it's not huge here. The risk is about you learning, understanding, gaining knowledge, going out there and helping in the manner in which we should be helping our communities. So what are the fees for our connected? The fees that are connected? To, yes, for, for you for client doing a oh, per, okay. per client. Do we
as I indicated, Leather Trade Recovery next yeah. year is going to be starting a training program. Stay with us. They're going to be starting, we're going to be starting a training program and it's going to be $150 per month. So that means where we have the electronic means of being able to sit in front of a computer and then have 5, 10, 15 screens that are looking back at us. Our current fee for credit recovery is $350. And the reason why we do it again in three month cycles is because of the fact that it's going to take at least 30 days for it to get into the hands of Equifax change in Experian, the government can then initially say we need another 15 more days to process your request. Once that process is gone, you have your first screenshot, you have all your first hand information. Before you even pay again, you're gonna go through another process of the disputes. And ultimately, before you even get ready to pay that third or that, that first initial or the second payment, you're gonna have three reports in hand. So you're going to see success before you even move to that next level. And that's ultimately how we set it up. People look at us and say, how do you do that? It's, that's not even possible. You're not going to make no money. Trust me. There's 270 million people struggling with credit. I only need 1% of the population. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Is it up front because you get your information immediately. And we don't, we'll, as soon as you say I'm ready to go through the process, you go through Equifax, or excuse me, you go through um, Privacy Guard. Once you've gone through Privacy Guard, what we do is once we have that information, we compile it into our system, we generate your uh, reports. Once, you ha once your reports and disputes are generated, that's when you pay. Once you pay us, we email everything right to you. If you come to our office, we give you the information right then, right there. So it's an exchange for an exchange. So the re only reason why I don't do payment plans is because of the fact that most people got into their situations because of payment plans. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yeah, we so get... Well, let me put it to you this way. <laughs> most of us go out and we'll buy our kids, our Families, we we're, we're, we got to be at every engagement. We got to be at every party. We got to be at every function. We have to look the best, but we're not doing it in the manner in which we should. I'd rather make sure that my household is taken care of before I buy someone a three hundred dollar pair of Jordans. I'd like to make sure and get this: people are going out buying iPhones and, yeah. and, and things of that nature. So it's getting individuals to rethink. What's important? We have the discretionary but spending. You know, when they come in to get their kind of like iffy, like, is this really like going to oh. happen? Or like, okay, Absolutely. I'm going to come back. Yeah. You know. But do you want to know something? Uh, they come back. <laughs> they all come back. Yeah. Yeah. They all come back. It might take them 30 days. It might take them 45 days. It might take them 60 days. Oh, yeah. They all come back because they know how important it is after they sit down or after they've been rejected. They need um. It's due on the first month. It's due on that first, once, you, once we exchange uh, documentation, it's due right then. So I, like we said, we compile everything, we give you your audit, your audit is in black and white. So most of us react to what we can see. How so, are you getting group information out to the consumer so that they can come to you? Well, we've used uh, our online process. Now with this little gathering, we're hoping that this would be our catalyst to allowing us to now get more word out into the public. We use social media mechanisms, which are Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter. I'm online probably more than anybody could ever imagine, even as a teacher. I have a question about this. Okay. Um, that would be the last question. Yes. Oh, there was oh a company that we're God. currently working with right now and or not working with any longer because of their inability to satisfy their customers, but their customers were paying up to $1,700 a month. So we're so under the totem pole when it comes to the, our understanding of 
how we're doing with what we're doing. It's again, it's to build that trust, to build that understanding that the consumer needs us way more than the business may think that uh, they need the consumer. So it's really a give and take. We are here for the consumer. But I don't want to take up any more time. Brother Rob's got to close this out. We can answer any other questions that you may have right here at the table. Um, let's give Brother Tyrone and uh, his group another round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are certainly delighted, and we told you it was going to be a fantastic treat. Um, and so we are grateful. Uh, again, we, we, we just can't uh, say enough. But you're a part of the UN now. Yes. So uh, we'll be um, anticipating or we will be putting forth new programming. Uh, we're looking at the next uh, Ujama Economic Educational Symposium in the month of February. Um, the UN uh, is concentrating on five areas of wealth development. And those five areas are, uh, one, financial literacy, which kind of runs through everything, all the other topics. Number two is insurance industry. Number three, the credit industry, which you heard about today. And the other two uh, areas is taxes and real estate. So we're looking to have another dynamic presentation uh, in February, uh, either dealing with uh, real estate and or taxes. So we, again, thank you. We just want to let you know we do have refreshments over to the left, and we want you to, partic uh, to partake in those. Um, we also want to inform you that uh, the Yonkers African American Heritage Committee is having a upcoming event uh, Friday, uh, October 26th, and that's going to be at the Riverfront, uh, excuse me, the Riverview, um, the Riverview uh, at 1 Warburton Avenue. It is our uh, scholarship banquet. Um, we are honoring a few of our young um, high school graduates who are moving on to college, and uh, we want you to support that. So, Brother Glover, I definitely have your two tickets ready here for you. Um, and um, we want to uh, thank each and every one of you for coming out. We see our, uh, our friend and our brother, uh, Brother Chris Johnson here. We'd just like to acknowledge him. <laughs> Would you like to say a word, Chris? Okay, we, we really appreciate him coming out. And family, um, we are not discouraged. We're not discouraged at all at the work that is required to change ourselves and to help our community to transform and change. So these educational symposiums, again, is a part of our public service that we offer free of charge to the public because we want our understanding and awareness to be raised. And once, as a community, our understanding is raised, then we can start making an impact collectively on our condition. So this is, again, just part of the process. Um, we're looking forward to meet again as a group uh, probably within the next month and uh, review what we've heard here and, and start to plan for the next um, activity. So look forward to um, hearing from us, uh, the UN, in short order. Um, I don't think there's very much else other than thank you again, Rob, for for stepping up uh, from Sight and Sounds. Um, they, they've been right there, and um, we're just so pleased. So again, this is the networking time and uh, refreshments. And if there are any questions uh, or comments that you want to uh, have, uh, that you want to exchange, you can talk to any one of us. And again, we thank you, and we say peace and blessings and safe travels, and have a blessed day. All right. Thank you.